Rogue. And nice to have you with us on a busy afternoon as we talk about what's going on as far as the world of college basketball is concerned. Good to have you aboard with our good buddies Eddie Erickson today, Colin Schmeling. We take you through your afternoon. Really all week we'll be on top of this. And uh, we'll do a few other things too. We're not going to neglect whether it's football, the NFL free agency, Tiger yesterday in uh, Tampa. We'll get into that, a little baseball with Arietta. we got other things, but uh, the heart and soul of our matter for the next four or five days will be the hoops, and it's good to have you with us as we chat. Triple Eight Mad Dog 6, that is your two-way sports talk telephone number on this Monday, the 12th day of March, 2018. Krzyzewski today, a little later on. Steve Heichel, the head coach of Rutgers, what a job he's going to do. He's going to come in studio today to do a bracket with. This. So we can have him get his thoughts. Obviously, Rutgers in the Big Ten. He knows all the teams. Uh, this is a guy that was at UConn, knows what's going on. He even knows the little guy. So we'll get a chance to to Steve and have a conversation there. Looking forward to that. That is a little bit later on here today, too. And you and I, as we chat about what's cooking here as far as the world of sports is concerned, I'll do a two-pronged attack right out of the gate. We're started with the committee, and the problem that the NCAA has on a you know really a year-to-year basis is this committee's ability objectives change because the, the the committee chairman changes and I don't know what the composition, how it works, who goes off, who comes in, but it's not the same whatever it might be group of guys and ADs and coaches on a year-to-year basis. And so as a result, you have inconsistency is rampant and you never can quite figure out what exactly that they're up to. And this year, they made a bunch of mistakes. I mean, we can get into the seating all night. Because obviously Arizona should not be a four seed. We can do that. We can get into uh, you know West Virginia's seated below Texas uh, Tech, which I don't understand. There's a million of those things we can do too. But the big, big pieces that we're most concerned about is the omissions and the commissions, as far as the committee is concerned, with who they put in the tournament and who they put out of the tournament. Um, and obviously, if you're a conspiracy theory, the teams that got burned here the most are the teams under that FBI deal. I mean, that's just all there is. There's no way around it. You can sit there and say, well, there's nothing to it. Nobody paid attention to it. But, hey, bottom line is, you know, the Louisville, the Oklahoma States, the USC's, I mean, any team throwing Arizona with a low seed, anywhere you want to go, the teams that were FBI, where they had an opportunity to bury that team, and are not the team that was a guaranteed entry. I'm talking about the, the 50-50 team. Uh, they fell on the wrong side based on, you know, whatever they might be, and they claim nothing to it. We talked to Bruce Rasmussen, Steve and I did last night on our selection show right here on Sirius XM82, the great Sirius XM82 I neglected to mention early. And from that perspective, uh, you know, there is a conspiracy theory out there saying that they did this on purpose. I'm going to talk about the three big issues first, and then we'll take a break, and then I got a couple of things to do, and then get your calls in and um, before the bottom of the hour here. It's important. All right, number one, uh, to me, the biggest error is the Oklahoma State Oklahoma thing. Uh, I don't think there's any other thing, you, I don't think there's any way you can get around it. Oklahoma did not win a road game, or has not, not let me put it this way, has not won a road game in 2018. Has not won a road game. I mean, think about it. Has not won a road basketball game since 2018. Now, that is absolutely absurd that you have not won a road game in that period and somehow you make the NCAA tournament over Oklahoma State that, you know, has won road games, including one at Kansas and West Virginia, and somehow you go in over them. Now, Oklahoma State and Oklahoma basically have the same records, all right? We understand that. I think one 19 and 13, one's 19 and 14. I mean, so the record is roughly the same. So I'm not going to sit there and their conference record is roughly the same as well. Both were a couple of games under 500 in their conference. I'm going to get to that a little later on too. But if you look for a second, if you wish, at Oklahoma State, I'm going to give you their road wins. Forget the off the, before the season stuff. That kind of thing's a wash anyway. But their road wins for that, for, for uh, they, Oklahoma State beat Oklahoma two out of three in a regular season. Head to head should mean something when these sort of scenario goes on. Uh, they and as far as their road wins are concerned, they won at Kansas 84-79. They won at West Virginia 88-85. I mean, when you win, when you win all these road games, and I got a couple more here. They won at Iowa State and everything else. When you won at West Virginia and you won at and Kansas. 
when you win those two games on the road and you beat Oklahoma two out of three and the Sooners have not played or not won a road game since January 1st, how the hell could you not, in fact, put Oklahoma State in this tournament over Oklahoma? I, I don't quite understand that. And they played the other day, which should have been, when you get right down to it, a game where, um, you know, the winner was in, the loser was out, and Oklahoma State the other day beat Oklahoma 71-60. to So, I mean, how in the world do you put Oklahoma in, who were 18-13 and in the regular season? How do you put Oklahoma in because of training with the young kid? They want to get some viewers. Nobody knows anybody on Oklahoma State. You want to be a cynic? Now is Oklahoma barely in. In the tournament, they're a 10 seed. They're not even in the last four scenario. So that, to me, and again, I don't want to make a big deal about Oklahoma State. Their, wedge, their resume, I mean, is not great either. I mean, you know, they did beat Florida State, okay. Uh, you want to make a big deal about that? They beat Florida State. I mean, there's not a lot on And they beat them in Miami. They beat them in Orlando. Uh, I think they beat them in Miami, the Orange Bowl. You want to make it? So they, it's not like they did a great deal either. I don't want to sit there and make it sound like this is a, you know, this is a grave injustice. I would have had no trouble if they left both out. But somehow, some way, they put Oklahoma in. And I throw Texas in the mix here, too. Texas should not be in the NCAA tournament. Five games over 500, two games under 500, and Oklahoma State split with Texas on the year. So, I mean, I, I when you beat Kansas twice, in Kansas, 86-82, they beat him in Kansas. Oklahoma State did. You would think if you have beat Kansas twice, and that Kansas game in Kansas was Super Bowl Sunday, or the day before, February 3rd. No, that was Super Bowl Sunday, February 3rd. You would think... No, maybe it was the day before. But regardless, you would think you get yourself in a tournament. All right, that's problem number one. Problem number two is Notre Dame-Syracuse. Now, a lot of people didn't even have Syracuse anywhere near this tournament. Syracuse won a couple of games of note all year. They won at Miami and at Louisville. I mean, they beat Clemson. Big deal. I mean, at home. I mean, that's basically it. Notre Dame, obviously, was 14-5 and five with uh, with Carlson in the game. Now, listen, I don't want to make it out to be that they blew you away with, uh, with their numbers either. But, you know, they did beat Virginia Tech. Uh, you know, they had a couple of good wins, Notre Dame. And here's the bottom line about Notre Dame. Syracuse and Notre Dame are basically even. And as the commission, committee chairman told you yesterday, Davidson winning in the 8-10 final against Rhode Island knocked Notre Dame out. All right, so Notre Dame was knocked out because Davidson won. So you're talking about Syracuse and Notre Dame. Syracuse is last in, and Notre Dame is first out. Well, if it's that close, what should be the tiebreaker? Head-to-head, correct? What happened in head-to-head between Notre Dame and Syracuse? Notre Dame went to Syracuse and beat them. That's all you need to know. They played one time on Syracuse's court, and Notre Dame won the game. Now, I mean, I don't know what else. They're dead even. If you got to take another ACC team, they're dead even. Well, that's Notre Dame then breaks the tie with the head-to-head. For some reason, the committee doesn't look at these head-to-head scenarios. Every other sport, head-to-head is everything. NFL, ask how important head-to-head is in the NFL. Or, or the NBA when you have a tie and who gets home court. Head-to-head is everything. It's, it's for some reason, head-to-head does not work that way in the NCAA tournament. All right, that's the second thing I got a problem with. And the third thing I got a problem with, you know, there are nine teams, nine teams in this NCAA tournament, if you include their first-round loss in their conference tournament, there are nine teams that are in the NCAA who did not finish 500 or better in their league. Nine. Five of those teams were under 500 regardless of the conference tournament, and then four other teams went into their conference tournament at 500 and lost their first game, a la Creighton, a team like that. Nine teams. Nine. So we play two-thirds the bulk of our season, and nine of those teams, including Arizona State, by the way, Syracuse, yes, the team two, Oklahoma State, Oklahoma and Texas, that's four. There's another one. Nine teams under 500 made the NCAA tournament. That, to me, is ridiculous. Do you make the NCAA tournament? Or do you make the NFL playoffs? Theoretically. Does Do nine teams make the – nine out of 68 – now, 9 out of 68, That's how, what's that of a percentage of? 9 and 68 is what? 10% would be 90. Uh, it's about 15%. 15%. All right, that, that would be basically two playoff teams a year. Are there two playoff teams in the NFL a year that are under 500 that are in the playoffs? Are there two baseball teams a year that are under 500 to make the playoffs? Two. No, there are not. Yet there's nine. Nine in the NCAA who f- could not finish over 500 in your league. That's ridiculous. 13 after the hour, we continue. Mad dog. Go-